I've talked a lot about maximum point blank range in the past, but I don't know that I've ever gone through the process from beginning to end for zeroing a rifle for maximum point blank range. Well, I recently got a request to do just that. And seeing as how I also just recently zeroed this one for that, I thought this was the perfect day for us to just go ahead and go through the entire process. To calculate our maximum point blank range, we need two pieces of information. We need the ballistic coefficient of the bullet we're using, and we need to know the velocity. Okay, in my case, with this Parker Hale Lee and Field Conversion 303 British, I'm using Federal 150 grain power shocks. And I went to Federal's website, they had the ballistic coefficient for this bullet as 0.356. Right. Some Ammo is a lot tougher to find the ballistic coefficient than others. You might have to do some looking around. And a lot of times, if you go to enough websites for different places that sell the ammo, eventually you'll find one that gives the ballistic coefficient for what a particular bullet. But usually you can find it at the manufacturer's website. I just seem to remember having some issues with different manufacturers in the past, and I had to do some looking. Okay, velocity, a little more difficult. Federal list the advertised velocity for this loading is 2,690 feet per second. But I've chronographed this rifle and I know my actual velocity is 2,610 feet per second. Right, that's a pretty big discrepancy there and that happens a lot. Not always, but often. All right, so. It's best if you can chronograph your rifle with your particular ammo, if you can't. My advice would be for factory ammo to take whatever the advertised velocity is and for a 22 inch barrel, subtract 50 feet per second off of that advertised velocity and for a 24 inch barrel, subtract 30 feet per second. All right, that's, that's going to kind of get you in the ballpark hopefully <laughs> and we'll verify this later on okay if you're using hand loads go to your load data and with your powder charge figure out about where you think you're going to be at on velocity and do the exact same thing subtract 30 feet per second for a 24 inch barrel subtract 50 feet per second for a 22 inch barrel and then those will give us numbers that we can work with. And then I'll explain how to verify that at the range here shortly. Right. Now that we've got our input numbers, just go to a search engine on the computer, type in maximum point blank range calculator, scroll down till you see the one for shooter's choice and click on it. And there's all kinds of maximum point blank range calculators out there, apps and different websites and so forth. It just happens to be the one I use and it's simple. It's free, it works. All right, but you can use whichever. In this case, for shooter's choice, the very first input field is for the ballistic coefficient. And there's different ballistic coefficients, different ways to do the math. That's what it amounts to. All right, so it defaults to G1, which is by far the most common for hunting bullets. Now, with the high BC bullets out now, some of them use the G7 ballistic coefficient. All right. The way you know which one is when you go to the manufacturer's website or whoever's and you look up the ballistic coefficient, if it doesn't have a number there at all, and just your ballistic coefficient 0.345, whatever, it's going to be G1. If it's if they're using any other ballistic coefficient, then they'll list it there when they give that number. So it'll say ballistic coefficient G7 and then a number. Okay, then you would select G7 here. But in our case, it's G1, so we're just going to leave it on the default. Okay, the next field, the actual value. In our case, it's 0.356, so we'll enter that. Then velocity. Okay, our velocity is 2,610 feet per second. Okay, our sight, our sight in height. That's the distance from the center of the scope 
to the center of the bore. And it's at default 1.5. If you have a scope that's low profile, you're using medium or low rings, just leave it at 1.5. If you've got a really big objective lens, you've got high rings, change it to 2 inches. If your scope's really high, change it to 2.5. But this number is really not critical. Um, it just makes almost no difference for what we're doing. At a thousand yards, you would want this number to be really accurate. Even at a thousand yards, it's not going to make much difference, seriously. So at ranges we're working at, it's not an issue. You can just leave it at 1.5 if you want to. Okay, now for our target size. Smaller to gain, smaller to target. And this is personal preference here. For myself, I use a six inch diameter for the calculation. This is for deer. I could use an eight inch diameter and I'd be okay. But I just prefer to err on the side of caution and use a six inch diameter because I, I know everything's not going to be just theoretically perfect out in the field hunting. Okay, so I just opt for six inches. Now we hit calculate. Okay, now we have some values. All right, if we scroll down, we can see for this particular load for this rifle. Okay, our near zero is 23 yards. Our far zero is 215 yards. Our maximum point blank range is 252 yards. And our 100 yard zero needs to be 2.83 inches high. So now, let's break this down and see exactly what those numbers mean. We have a scope. And from a scope, we have our sight plane. And a sight plane is perfectly flat and goes to infinity but due to the nature of gravity. When we fire a rifle, shotgun, pistol, anything, as soon as the bullet leaves the muzzle, it starts falling. Right, so to hit anything at a distance, we actually have to point the rifle itself upwards. So the bullet's going to go up and it's going to come back down and hit the target. In this case, okay, we zeroed our rifle at 100 yards 2.83 inches high. Okay, and that's what we got from the maximum point blank range calculator for this bullet traveling at this velocity. Okay, so this bullet's leaving the muzzle. It's traveling upwards. It's going to cross our sight plane at 23 yards. So zeroed this way, this bullet's going to hit dead center zero in the bullseye at 23 yards. It's going to keep traveling upwards. Then it's going to hit 2.83 inches high at 100 yards where we zeroed it. It's going to keep traveling until it reaches the top of the arc, which is going to be three inches high at some distance past 100 yards. And we know it's three inches because we used the six inch diameter for our target size. So our bullet's never going to be more than three inches high or three inches low within our maximum point blank range. Okay, so the bullet hits the top of its arc, then it starts falling. All right, it's going to cross our sight plane again at 215 yards, our far zero. So zeroed this way, a target at 215 yards, the bullet would hit dead center in the bullseye on it. Then it's going to keep falling until we reach our maximum point blank range of 252 yards. The bullet's going to be three inches low. Anything past 252 yards, and our bullet's going to be more than three inches low. And the further out we get, the lower we're going to be. And that's what all those numbers mean. Now, if you're not exactly sure what your velocities are, you just pick the number. Okay, well, now that you've got your values, you've zeroed your rifle at 100 yards, or meters, whatever you're doing, and do your conversions. Okay, you've got it zeroed for the height that 100 yards for your calculations. Set up a target at your near zero, fire a shot, and the bullet should be dead center in the bullseye. If the bullet's higher than the bullseye, then your velocity is higher than the value you used. If it's lower, your velocity is slower. And keep in mind up close, you're not going to see much variation. So ideally, if at all possible, you want to verify this at your far zero 
or even better at your maximum point blank range, that's when you know you got it right. And then if it's off, you can adjust accordingly. And same thing at your far zero. If the bullet's hitting high, your velocity is higher than you think it is. If it's low, then it's slower than you think it is. Okay, and in my case, I carried this rifle out. I knew these Federal 150 grains were shooting adequately. They were shooting decent. Okay, so I fired two shots. I know it's already grouping decent, and I didn't need a three or four shot group. And I am trying to save ammo. Stuff's hard to come by right now. All right, so I fired a two shot group. Great group. I seen that it was low and it's to the right. I made adjustments for windage and elevation. I fired a third shot just to verify that I moved everything correctly. My third shot was just a little high. So I moved it down one click on elevation and then that's where I left it. And I should be perfect on this rifle. Okay, ideally I'd have fired another shot and verified that. But keep in mind what I said about using a six inch diameter versus an eight inch. I do have room for error here. Okay, and that's my reasoning for a six inch diameter. So with this particular rifle, I'm good to go. I'm out to 250 yards, there's no question about it. Deer steps out, I put the crosshairs on vitals, deer goes home with me. All right, pretty simple. And that's all there is to maximum point blank range and getting the calculation and zeroing. What zeroing for maximum point blank range does is it lets us zero our scopes to give us the maximum range possible so that we can shoot an animal, hit vitals, and not have to make any elevation changes. Okay, now I know in the past decade or so that's become really popular using a laser range finder, getting the yardage, adjusting the turrets, and then making the shot. Okay, but in hunting, depending on where you hunt, most of the time in hunting, though, we don't have time to do that. Now, there are places that are absolutely wide open where you do. Now, area I hunt, generally for long distances, it's a pipeline or a power line, some kind of narrow opening. Even in a clear cut, I'm just able to see in pockets, little openings in the clear cut. All right, so narrow openings deer steps out. Sometimes they stop, sometimes they don't. And I generally only have just a moment to make the shot. Okay, so I can't, I don't have time to use the laser range finder and get the yardage, make the adjustment, and then make the shot. All right, so that's a big advantage for me having a rifle and knowing what my maximum point blank range is. Okay, and then, even if you don't use maximum point blank range, Knowing about a maximum point blank range calculator, you can use the calculator, you can plug in the numbers for different loadings, different ballistic coefficients and velocities for different cartridges, and that just gives you a really good understanding of what velocity does for you, and that can help you with selecting a cartridge for hunting or for selecting a, a bullet, a specific bullet for a cartridge you're already using. Okay. When I zeroed my rifle, my friend Joey was there with this 270 WSM. Okay, significantly higher than that. And if we look at his numbers, okay, he had a velocity of 3,180 feet per second, 140 grain bullet, ballistic coefficient of 0.495, and that gives him a maximum point blank range of 314 yards for a six inch circle. All right, significantly more than my 303 British here. It's because of the velocity. Okay, and then if, in his case, if he changed that to eight inch diameter, he's got a maximum point blank range over 350 yards. Okay, so that's really reaching out there. Right, what, if we look at the cartridges that were popular for long range hunting before the advent of the laser range finder, all of them were high velocity. 270 Winchester, uh, 257 Weatherby Magnum, that type of stuff. That velocity gave them a longer maximum point blank range. Okay, now by contrast, if we plug in the numbers 
for popular long range cartridge today, 6.5 Creedmoor. All right. A lot of people love it for long range hunting. Okay, if we plug in the numbers for that, for using Hornaday's ELDX Precision Hunter with a 143 grain bullet, and it has a really high G1 ballistic coefficient of 0.625, and they gave the G7 ballistic coefficient for it also. We're going to use the G1. Well, if we, and it has a velocity of 2,700 feet per second. Well, if we plug all that in, that gives us a maximum point blank range of 274 yards for a six inch circle. It's only about 20 yards more than my 303 British here with 150 grain. All right, so it does not have a long maximum point blank range. Well, that's because it, it never had the velocity to start with. Okay, now with the high BC bullet at, at a certain point, because it's not slowing down as fast as, say, Joey's 270 WSM, at a certain point, it's actually going to have a higher velocity than this 270 WSM. But that point's going to be past 1,000 yards because Joey's 270 WSM had such a higher, significantly higher velocity to start with. Okay, BC it can only make up for so much. And then in the case of the 6.5 Creedmoor, if we take another loading for it, all right, so we use Hornaday's outfitter load with 120 grain bullet, lighter bullet, ballistic coefficient of 0.428, muzzle velocity of 2,925 feet per second. Well, now it's got a maximum point blank range of 286 yards. 12 more yards than with the long range 143 grain bullet. That's the difference velocity makes. Okay, and as far as which is best, well, it just depends on how you're hunting. And that's where knowing how you're going to hunt and being aware of maximum point blank range versus making the elevation changes, knowing the difference between those, well, that can help you with selecting a cartridge and or a bullet for your cartridge. And that's why traditionally most hunters for longer ranges chose the lighter bullets. Okay, uh, 270 Winchester. 130 grain bullet was the popular choice for longer ranges. The only reason people chose a 150 grain bullet for 270 Winchester in the past was either for better penetration on larger game or to slow the bullet down so it didn't do as much damage. Okay, well these days it's just the opposite. People are choosing the heavier bullets for the longer ranges because of the higher ballistic coefficient. But that just doesn't do you any good until you get way out there. So just something to keep in mind. And maybe you have a loading for each lighter bullet and a heavier bullet, just depending on where you're hunting. Okay, in my case, just three or three British. When I tried some ammo earlier this year, I also tried the Winchester 180 grain power points, and they were actually more accurate in this rifle than the Federal 150 grain. My velocity was significantly slower though. I was getting, I think, 2,000, 200, 300 feet per second. Anyway, when I plugged in the numbers for the 180 grain bullets, I had a maximum point blank range of 220 yards. That's significantly less than 250 and for deer. I don't need the extra sectional density of the 180 grain bullet. The better penetration. That's not an issue for deer at these velocities. So 150 grain bullet will work perfectly for what I'm doing. If I was going after moose or elk or something like that, I would want the 180 grain definitely. All right, so that's just, anyway, that's just getting into bullet selection then, but as far as maximum point blank range, play around with some of the numbers and try out some of the different cartridges. A lot of things from the past on why that certain cartridges were so popular will start to make a lot more sense then. And as far as which one you need, just figure out how you're going to hunt. Now just for some channel stuff and hunting stuff. A lot of you asked me about this Parker Hell if I ever got back to it and got it set up. And 
Yes, I did, and that's what I'm hunting with this year. And I'd planned on hunting with this and the 1903 A3. That's my plan. This one with a 2x7 power scope, chambered in 303 British, 22 inch barrel. And this is a lightweight rifle, but shoots excellent. This is just an ideal woods gun right here. All right, well, then the 1903 A3, 24 inch barrel, 30 out 6, 4x12 scope. It's a perfect longer range gun. And that's my plan, use this for the woods and tighter places, and then the 1903 A3 for those longer range places. Well, I finished it before deer season, but just barely, and I didn't have time to do the load testing. So it's just this rifle for this year, and that's fine. This will do everything I need to do. And I know that because I hunted for many years with a Leo, Lee Enfield and 303 British, and it did everything I needed it to do. So that's where I'm at on rifles for this season. But as far as this season, quite a few of you asked me how my season was going. Not well. And it's basically I just hadn't been motivated this year. Honestly, that's what it comes down to. First of all, I hadn't had time. Back in earlier this year, I had COVID back in springtime and between it and doctor's appointments and dentist appointments and just different things that came up. My vacation days got used up earlier this year. All right, so I don't have any time off from work for hunting this year. And I mentioned before, I've got alpha gall syndrome. All right, I'm allergic to red meat. That's from tick bites. Be careful with ticks. They cause more than just Lyme disease and Rocky, Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Go look up alpha gall syndrome. So anyway, normally I can eat a little bit of venison at a time and get back used to eating it and eating it and it doesn't bother me. This year, I don't know if it's COVID threw me off or what, but I just hadn't been able to get back used to eating it. it it's causing problems. And I've got venison in the freezer from last year. Uh, that's why I hunt, is for the meat, for, to be able to eat. I'm not out there for sport, although I do love it. Well, if I can't eat it and I don't need the meat, that just that kills my motivation. So yes, I just have not been motivated this year. But I do plan on hunting some more this year. I hadn't hunted much at all, just lack of time, but I can only hunt on Saturdays without having vacation days and public land and our public land's pretty crowded on Saturdays. So but I do plan on trying some new spots and just focusing more on learning this year than anything. But now Joey, on the other hand, Joey was motivated this year and he put in the work and it paid off. Joey limited out before our rifle season even started. So just crossbow and muzzleloader, he took a limit, which for us is five deer without getting creative on special tags and special hunt units and that type of stuff. So he put in the work and it showed. And that's hunting. You get out of it what you put into it. And, and for those of you that in the past that have asked me about primitive weapons, they do give you a huge advantage. On public land in, in my area, we have an extremely long deer season. Our archery season opens September 14th, muzzleloader October 1st, rifle season October the 11th and then our deer season goes runs till January 1st so three months on public land if you haven't got your deer by generally by November 1st it's going to be tough because after they get just a little bit of pressure on them on, on our public land you're in you're going to struggle to, to get anything after that. It, it can be done, and there are places you can do it, but it's a lot more work. So, yeah, the, the primitive weapons, they definitely give you an advantage because they get you in the woods early before the deer are pressured. And then once our deer on public land are pressured, generally you're going to find them on the really good private land places. So Anyway, just something to keep in mind for those of you that have wondered about primitive weapons. And yeah, that's where I'm at on deer season this year. So, a little update there. 
And as far as next week, what we're going to do next week, next video, I have no clue. This year, just kind of playing it by ear. So God bless and make sure you've hit the subscription and notification bell if you're curious of what we're doing next week. Like I said, at this point, I had no idea. So God bless and y'all have a great day.